This is our series in Mexico. We put everything in storage, packed our bags, and bought a one-way ticket. Our plan is to explore and eat our way through this beautiful and diverse country. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button and the bell to get notified when a new episode drops. Sun up, sun down. I know now. You are the one. I know. As we leave Tulum this morning, we're looking forward to leaving the busy tourist destination behind to find a bit of boredom, the kind you felt before you were an adult. We have about a two and a half hour car ride to the port town of Chiquila. This drive used to be twice as long, but they have recently opened a new highway that makes getting there a breeze. There are no cars on the island, so in order to get over to Holbox, you have to take one of the ferries. There's a fast ferry and a regular ferry, but this one was leaving in eight minutes, so we took it. Laidback Holbox is a car-free island north of the Yucatan and northwest of Cancun where the Gulf rendezvous with the Caribbean. Separated by a lagoon, which is home to many birds, including flamingos and pelicans. If you're here in late summer, you can swim with the whale sharks and the sea turtles. And there's the famously impossible to film bioluminescence and tons of fishing. The ferry from Tequila takes about 30 minutes. We didn't know this at the time, but the golf cart taxis will take you from the ferry station to the hotels for about 30 pesos. So carry some small change with you. We did not. We ended up walking to the hotel, but figured it out before we headed home. When you arrive on the island, you'll see the unpaved streets are made of white sand that eventually runs into the milky turquoise water on the beach. Pro tip here in Holbash, there are not paved roads. The taxis are golf carts. So when it comes to packing, maybe consider wheels and footwear. As we're learning, Holbosch Village is still a pretty well-kept secret compared to the rest of the Yucatan. They only had electricity installed in the late 80s, and there's a big conservation and sustainability effort on the island. All of the hotels pay an eco-tax, there are no straws, no plastic bags, and I've heard they've been banning new construction. Sometimes you visit a place because of what they're is not to do, just as much as you would choose a location with lots of hiking or sightseeing. This is the perfect place to do nothing. The Wi-Fi is spotty at best, and eventually you just have to give up and give in. You certainly can find things, but I would highly recommend knocking those to-dos out in the first few days, and then just opting to chill for the remainder of your stay. When else and where else can you really just do nothing and not need an excuse? We could learn a lot from Holbosch. About a thousand people live here full-time, known as Holbashinos. Most residents are fishermen, and this weekend there was a big fishing tournament and festival. Music played well into the morning hours celebrating the competition. This is a place where Mexicans also go for vacation. Yes, there are a lot of Americans and British here, but it's so refreshing to see people enjoying their own country. They haven't been priced out by inflated tourist prices and resorts, and Holbosch Village is very much where the locals live. Street art is everywhere, compliments of the annual art festival that's hosted here. Colorful murals line the streets and make it a treat to wander around. And also very easy to learn the lay of the land with so many landmarks. For such a small island, there were a bounty of food options. There are taco and crepe stands everywhere, and we even found this little food hall you can grab a spot in the shade and enjoy a cold beverage. The gringos that you meet here aren't the resort and cruise variety that need to be shuttled around. There's an obvious lack of selfie sticks here, and let's just hope that it stays that way. When you enter Luma, you can immediately see the care that went into the design of this unique open air bar, restaurant and boutique carefully crafted from repurposed items such as fishing nets and umbrellas from Bali. Everything looks right at home underneath the twinkle lights and palm tree fronds. The tapas style menu is all farm to table and local, representing the bounty of the Yucatan. Huge platters of food come out from the kitchen 
and are meant to be eaten by hand and shared so that you can eat your way through the menu for maximum exposure to the delights of this inventive menu. Don't fret. If there's only two of you, the well-versed and skillful staff can guide you in the right direction. Sunset is the daily communion on the island. If you aren't in view of the horizon or sitting on the beach for closing ceremony, you've missed the very best part of Holbosch. Mandarina Restaurant, inside of the Casa de la Tortuga Hotel, is beachfront and in prime location for a sundowner. The menu is mostly Mediterranean and is run by Chef Jorge Malul from Buenos Aires. The fish is brought every morning from the fishermen and all other items are locally grown. So the beaches in Tulum, they had pretty bad Saragossa problems. So honestly, it, they did not look like too much fun to go hang out and swim in the, in the Gulf or whatever. But the beaches here in Holbosch, they look pretty good. And the beach was really nice. So um, we had dinner there last night. So we are going to go for a little morning swim. Although we did next to nothing during our visit to this remote island, it turns out Holbosch is far from a place where you could get bored, even if you're idle. 